So um, I'm not going to lie, the energy for the month, it feels really good, but it feels a little bit tense, okay? Because it's going to uh, drag up some emotional issues that you need to kind of deal with. So I feel for, for many of you, if you've been proactive about, you know, communicating and expressing the way that you feel and, you know, being honest with yourself about what it is that you really want, and uh, putting yourself in situations where no one uh, can restrict your freedom of movement. No one can um, tell you, you know, you got to stay with me or tell you what to do. Then, you know, you're in a really good position to embrace the energy and the newness that's coming in for this month. On the other hand, if you're staying un in unhealthy relationships or you are, you know, keeping yourself stuck because of your own doing or because of other people's restrictions on you, then that's going to be problematic. Um, so let me talk first of all about um, what I'm picking up when I was shuffling the cards and then we'll go into the cards. Uh, first of all, secrets. Things that you're keeping very, very hidden, okay? Um, this is kind of like, you know, denial, like not wanting to deal with a situation, sweeping things under the rug. And I'm also seeing as well secrets, uh, fearing censorship, fearing judgment, fearing gossip, fearing rumors, fearing um, as well your emotions, the, the rush of emotional high that you can get from a situation. So you're keeping yourself balanced. You're trying to keep yourself uh, in control so that the emotions doesn't, you know, overwhelm you. And then I'm also seeing as well, um, things happening in your environment that are creating, you know, sources of temptation for you. And I feel temptation is in the romantic front. It's also in the, the work front. So this can be, you know, um, liking somebody in the work environment or having, uh, multiple options that are available in terms of jobs, in terms of work, or having multiple suitors that you're kind of uh, pursuing, okay? So I feel like you're trying to keep these areas separate, work and love, love and work. And um, you're going to need to be a little bit more careful about not mixing the two, or at least try to keep them separate, or try to keep them, you know, discreet, and then I'm also feeling as well, um, if you, you know, are looking for other jobs and you're not trying to let your supervisor know, um, you want to keep that hidden, okay? So that means, you know, if you're at work, for example, don't uh, browse the internet uh, or apply for jobs. They're going to know. So you want to be a little bit careful about how you handle this energy because it can trip you up if you're not careful. And honestly, Sagittarius, I feel like... Um, you, you might not be too careful, okay? Many of you guys are just like um, a little bit forgetful, so you might forget to close that browser. You might forget to delete text messages. You might forget things here and there, and then they will trip you up. So I want you to be very, very careful. Take a little bit more of a cunning approach when it comes to dealing with things and being take, taking that extra step to cover your tracks, okay? Um... Let me talk about this month and let me talk to you about what kind of came screaming out when I was um, shuffling the spread. So let me see. Let's talk about this first. So first of all, financially, let's talk about your financial situation here with the seven of pentacles. This is a card about impatience in the reverse. Working very diligently and waiting for the harvest, waiting for the payout, and knowing that the hard work is going to pay out. When it's in the reverse position, it's almost like um, counting your eggs before they hatch. Wanting to kind of uh, leapfrog ahead and not have to do the preliminary legwork in order to get to a situation. So I feel for many of you in the career front, there is this sense of restlessness coming in. 
when am I going to get a promotion? When am I going to, you know, get hand to, to handle the big accounts? When am I going to have like the bigger cases, the more interesting things coming my way on the work front? When am I going to be entrusted with more responsibilities? And unfortunately, this is a card about diligence. This is a card about accumulating and learning uh, knowledge, accumulating knowledge or learning new things in a linear progression. So you kind of have to know how to thoroughly do A in order to for people to entrust you with steps B. And you have to thoroughly know how to do step B in order for people to uh, entrust you with step C. So it's like learning in a very systematic way. And you can't really bypass certain steps just to get ahead. You can't even jump over certain steps in order to get to the end. So I feel like you're in a situation that is very, very systematic, is routinized, it's uh, regimented, and you're getting a little bit bored, a little bit impatient, and also, um, you know, a little bit restless. Like, when is my time going to come? When am I going to make the big bucks? When am I going to be trusted with the big accounts? When is this boredom going to go away? When am I going to do work that is more meaningful? So where you are right now, Sagittarius, financially, things are very, very good. Things are stable. It has long-term longevity and sustainability, job security, and it, it's going to, you know, lead to that trajectory, the, the, the career path. But I feel your restlessness is disallowing you from seeing how good this situation can be. Okay? So that's the first thing. The other thing I'm picking up to is this is a relationship partner here. We have an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And I feel like for some of you, there is restlessness within this relationship. And it has nothing to do with the way this person feels about you because you know the feelings are there. It has everything to do with your own sense of boredom about this relationship. Is it the best? Is it the best optimal outcome? Can I find another person out there in the world that exactly, that can give me what this person is giving me? Is this the, you know, the ultimate person that's meant for me? Or is there more to life? Am I happy with my life right now? Or am I projecting the dissatisfaction? onto my partner. So I feel that element here about some things that you need to sort out internally for yourself. Your work, your career, your job satisfaction, your um, hobbies, your life, your social life, and whether or not these things are bringing you that sense of personal fulfillment. Because if it's not, then you might, you know, turn to your partner to fulfill you in ways that might not be appropriate, okay? And then on top of that, we have here an earth sign. And um, for some of you, this is somebody that you're dealing with, a, a partner who is a little bit kind of um, impatient as well. And Funnily enough, earth signs are, are not like, you know, impatient people. But I feel like there's somebody in, in your life that you are, you don't get, you, you don't understand them, or you have had many, many run-ins with them, and you don't really understand the way they think, the way they operate, and they're very, very slow to react. So you're just like, what are you waiting on? Like, why are you waiting so long? What, are you, what do you want? Like, what are you waiting on? Uh, don't you see what I'm seeing? So I feel like those are the conversations or the thoughts that go through your head when you're dealing with this person. And you're, you're dealing with someone who is, you know, who, who stands by and observes. And they don't really take any concrete action. And as a fire sign, you're very end result oriented. And you're kind of frustrated when you're dealing with this person who is not really you feel who's not very proactive, okay? But then I also feel as well, on the flip side of that, you have somebody who is very de dependable. And the words that I'm hearing is they are a permanent fixture in the landscape. So that means they're there when you need them, okay? And I feel like uh, just don't take it for granted. They're there when you need them. So like they're always there. And when push comes to shove, they are there. 
And so when something is so, you know, uh, constant in our lives, we tend to take it for granted. And then when something is like always in the background or it's like a part of the landscape, we take it for granted as well. We think, oh, it's always going to be there. And then when they're not there, that's when you start to really see the impact of their presence, okay? The thing about earth signs in general is that um, they are very subtle. Their, their presence is very, very subtle. They're not flamboyant like a fire sign where, you know, they, they enter a room and the, the energy changes and everyone notices their entry. They're not like um, noticeable like an air sign where, you know, they communicate, they talk, and they're, they're like a wellspring of ideas. Earth signs are very, very subtle, and uh, they take care of things usually behind the scenes. They make sure things run well, operations-wise, logistics-wise, and then when they're not there, kind of like with Mercury retrograde, when Mercury is not there, things go awry. And then when this person is not there, things go awry behind the scenes. Things that you take for granted will run smoothly they go awry and that's when you start to miss this person's presence. So their subtlety is what makes them so indispensable. And it can be very difficult to pinpoint, you know, or to, to tell yourself how much you really need this person until you feel the lack of their presence. So I feel that's what's happening here. It's the lack of their presence that will make you so appreciative of all that they have to offer. Um, so that, that's the first thing. The other thing I want to talk about is this trio. We have a soulmate connection here and we do have temptation to people on either side of you. So I feel Sagittarius and I, you know, I, I, I don't sense this a lot for you guys, but I feel like this is a very, very, it's a good month but it tends to be a little bit more emotional than you'd like, okay? So let me talk about this first of all. The Six of Cups is a really, really beautiful card. It harkens back to like a past life energy, and it deals heavily with a, a situation where somebody can make us feel very loved by making us feel very safe. By making us feel very safe. There's a, um, a high level of chivalry associated with this card, where, you know, it's like uh, the, the man giving the woman flowers, the man doing something for the woman. And uh, I know that, you know, um, based on gender stereotypes, you know, th this, this is not always a positive thing. But um, the way that the card is de depicting, it's basically somebody, and it doesn't matter what gender you are, making you feel really, really safe and secure, mainly because they take care of your emotional needs, Okay. And this is basically feeling that connection, that's really strong soul connection with somebody. You might not even be attracted to them. You might not even, you know, be sexually attracted to them. But there's something there that warrants looking further into. And there's something there that makes you feel very at ease, very at home, very safe with the other person. And so you're feeling this with a specific person in your life. For many of you, you're caught between two partners. And I have here an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And then I have another person, could be an Aries person, a fire sign, or another fire sign. So Aries, Leo, or another Sagittarius. But what I'm feeling is, there is you're, you're like caught between two people. Um, the other sign might be somebody who's older than you. And who is in a, like an authority figure, a, in a position of power, such as a boss, a supervisor, somebody that you look up to, somebody that you really, really, really admire. And this is um, the energy of somebody who solves problems. They make the difficult decisions so that the, the people around them don't, don't have to. And a lot of the times they make difficult decisions. Even though it's difficult for them, it's for the well-being of everybody involved. And what that means to me is if you're in a relationship and they're in love with you, 
they're going to let you go because they want you to be happy with whoever it is that you're with, right? They make the difficult decision that are difficult for them. But they're doing it so that you don't have to make the, the, the choices. And then I'm also feeling as well with Sagittarius, a lot of the times, one sure way to know, to guess, you know, if a Sagittarius loves somebody, you have to respect the person that you love. So you can't love somebody if you don't respect them. And what I mean by that is you love people with a very strong sense of ethics. You love somebody with um, a very strong, you know, moral compass. You love somebody that has a, a, a strong sense of like um, morality. And when they represent or when they embody, you know, that, that pillar of strength and stability and morality, you really, really look up to them. You might not even be attracted to them. But you trust them, you believe in them, you admire them, and you naturally, once you have those, you know, once it's like trust, admiration, and uh, respect, once all of those things are met, you could fall in love with a person. And so I feel like some of you are caught between two people. One is possibly an earth sign, and then we have a fire sign, or a person that is older, or in a position of a um, leadership could be a mentor to you as well. So I feel like you're admiring somebody and it's turning into like a love connection. And I feel like this person, I'm feeling like it's mutual. I'm feeling like the, the feelings are mutual, but they're also looking at you and they're like, I wonder if the Sagittarius is single, you know, I wonder if I can make a move on them without jeopardizing our the the power dynamics in our relationship and I'm also wondering if they're attached and whether or not they're attached I should detach myself so I feel like we have this love triangle um what I'm also sensing as well is you might be involved with a superior here and you don't want it to jeopardize your work okay so you don't want it to interfere with your career you don't want it to jeopardize your work and then I'm also sensing as well the the attraction is really really strong it's very hard to ignore but the two of you out of that sense of moral obligation to one another because that's the nature of a soulmate connection no matter what you want the best for the other person and the soulmate connection denotes that you know Maybe you have feelings for each other, but you're not really doing anything because you don't want it to affect your work. You don't want it to affect, maybe he's married or she's married. You don't want it to affect them in that way. And they likewise are, are not doing anything about it. They don't want it to affect you. So we have a multitude of scenarios here, but I, eat, I feel love connection, love triangle, and uh, trying to deny it trying to avert your gaze, trying to uh, skirt the issue, trying to um, avoid them, trying to, you know, uh, not address these things, which is fine. I mean, you know, you're, you're going to do what you need to do to, to make the right choice based on your circumstance. But you're dealing with another person who is very moral. And um, there's a big fantasy here, big attraction and big fantasy, and it's really weird because um, the connection is really soulful, is what I'm, I'm feeling here. This is not just, you know, feeling attracted to somebody. If it was just physical attraction, where you have to do something, you have to have them, you have to possess them, then, you know, it, it's going to uh, happen, right? But this is like a really strong, it, it's, it's weird. This is fantasy. This is like, you know, fantasizing about a person, dreaming about a person, um, thinking about them and then seeing them, you know, down the hall or seeing them um, like call you or text you. This is like almost, um, you know, that um, telepathic connection with another person, thinking about them and then hearing from them or thinking about them and then seeing them in person. And then I have this, which is 
a lot of seduction, a lot of attraction, and a situation where um, two people are very like-minded, but also very, very strong-minded, and also this love connection, this, this soulmate type of a connection that where you really care about the other person. You don't want to hurt them. They don't want to hurt you. So I'm seeing here a lot of magnanimous energies where the two of you are trying to skirt issues. I'm so sorry for that um, constant alert. It's my email. Um, so what we have here are energies that you're going to have to maneuver. Try to do the right thing. And, you know, whatever the right thing is for you, do I go with this person that my heart really desires? Or do I stay in this safe relationship because the person is dependable and has always been there for me? But there is a sense of boredom. Am I bored? Is that why I'm looking outside of the relationship? Or should I try to re-inject some more passion and chemistry in my existing relationship to make it more dynamic? So I feel like you have some soul searching to do. I don't see you succumbing to temptation, but I feel many of you might have already gotten involved and now you're trying to figure out, like, what do I do? Caught between a rock and a hard place. What do I do? Act on my baser desires or do I just sit on it and not do anything? So, you know, it's based on on your the temptation that that are preventing uh, that are presenting themselves so we have some really deep dilemmas like spiritual um, emotional dilemmas that are in store for you and uh, Sagittarius I feel like I can always trust you to do the right thing I can always trust you to do the right thing but you know uh, there are lots of people watching this so I would strongly urge you you know don't succumb to your baser desires okay think about actions and consequences this is a uh, um about you know the the boy who cried wolf okay so it's like somebody that um craves a lot of attention when it's in the reverse position it's like uh getting negative attention okay so it could be getting in trouble for things or it could be, you know, uh, soliciting the wrong people. So if you know somebody is married, or if you know somebody who's not available, then don't go for it, okay? And the, on the other hand, if you yourself are not available, if you yourself are, 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 not, are in a relationship, you don't go looking for trouble. Um, but I, I trust you guys to do the right thing, and I feel like this is more than ever a big test of your ability to do the right thing despite all of these feelings that are being triggered here okay um, do the right thing especially if it's in a work environment for your professional life so try to make the the decisions that will not hurt your professional standing because that you know that's 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 a bummer okay if you mess up a relationship but also mess up your uh, work sector as well and your professional image and your reputation as well. So just be careful about that um, What I'm also sensing as well uh, We do have travel opportunities that are going to be coming into the picture and travel opportunities here This is news from afar news from a foreign land news from you know outside of the state um, Possibly like needing to travel at a moment's notice needing to travel um, not, It's not even like long distance and I usually think of this as like over land Okay, and I feel like the opportunities are presenting themselves multiple opportunities They're coming in very fast and very swift and I feel like you have to wait on decision You're kind of like in limbo waiting on the decisions of other people, waiting for them to finalize their plans because your plans are contingent upon theirs. So I feel like you might have to do this with another person. Like um, I'm seeing, you know, like friends, family, um, somebody in, in your work environment as well, possibly. If it's like a supervisor or somebody telling you, you have to do this today and then you have to coordinate with another person in order to bring the plans to fruition. So last minute travels 
a lot of shifting back and forth, possibly even further away travel, but I feel like it might be um, via a land route, okay? Um, I just want you to, you know, really think about... I, I see your energy as being very, very scattered for this month. Like you're at work and you're thinking about something else. You're thinking about a person. You're thinking about travel arrangement. You're thinking about multiple things. Keep yourself very, very focused. Try to zone out the things that are not within your control at that present moment in time. And then focus on what's immediately in front of you. Both of these cards, the Seven of Cups, distractions, fantasies, and the Four of Cups, not looking at what's in front of you. And so both of these cards are screaming out, you know, boredom and fantasy and drifting away and zoning out and not being focused and making errors and things like that in the work front. So just be really, really careful about that, okay? I'm going to see what else you need to know. Financially, um, it's a good month. I mean, you can always curb your spending. You guys are not never, like, too cautious about that and um, I feel like you know you're generous with other people so generosity will come back to you but curbing your spending and being a little bit more methodical about your spending it's always a good idea overall so I pulled out a few more cards just to see what else is available for you in work and in your professional life because I feel like the majority of the cards are screaming out relationships okay so this is potentially a house move that's going to be coming into the picture. Changing residence, changing apartments, moving away, trying to redecorate the home or even doing something in the home environment like major renovation. Also, um, traveling and leaving your home. Okay, so I feel like there might be a reshuffling when it comes to roommate situation. New people moving in, new old people moving out, new tenants, new leases, as well as new apartments. We also have as well the Seven of Wands, and the Seven of Wands linked up with the family card indicates harmony being restored in a home environment. It's slowly but surely being restored. And I also feel as well, for those of you who are doing major renovation, there's a lot of noise violation. There's a lot, not noise violation, just a lot of noise interference. There could also be a lot of uh, people working like the construction crew in your home environment, causing a lot of damage, causing a lot of noise, or making just a lot of ruckus, okay? So just be prepared for that and don't get frustrated. This is a new job, a new job that is on the offing for you. Um, when it shows up as the Ace of Pentacles in the reverse, it's sort of like a job where you feel like it's a brand new career path. It's a brand new job. And uh, you have to kind of work your way up. So initially, it's not going to pay you everything that you're hoping for. But it's still a big chunk of chain. It's still a really, really good opportunity. And if you choose to build on it, it's going to lead to a career. It's going to lead to tremendous income generating potential. But at first, it's not going to feel that way. I also feel like this is, do I want to move to go to a new job? Do I want to move... Uh, break my lease? Do I want to move out of the city? Do I want to move out of the state? Is this opportunity all it's cracked up to be? Do I want to stay here where things are really stable and safe and I have this, you know, budding romance? Or do I want to move here where my world is kind of um, turned upside down? So you have some, some deep things that you're going to need to kind of look over for this month. Career and love and home and you have to kind of figure out you know are you making the move because you feel it's all it's cracked up to be and it's going to bring you a lot more stability or it's going to bring you new opportunities or are you just making this move because you're kind of bored um, there's no right or wrong here Sagittarius I feel like it's very individualized and you know your individual circumstances will kind of dictate what you're going to do. Um, this relationship here, it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. It makes it just because I feel like there are three people. It's like a triangle. 
and it feels like the relationship itself is very fantasy based um it's in the ethers it's in your thoughts it's in your fantasy it's not in anything concrete and i feel as if if it's a fantasy you know sometimes the fantasy is what drives the passion in the chemistry and a lot of the times once you uh, make it a reality that's when it starts to be less than what you anticipated right so maybe you just need to try it out and then it won't surpass your expectations and then you know at least then you know but I, I feel like this is a little bit too uncomfortable for me because as a fire sign, I feel like you guys want something a little bit more concrete. And this is a little bit too lofty. It's too out there. And so I would urge you to, you know, keep it in the realm of fantasy. Mainly because you have other things that you need to work on. And this is just a distraction, I feel. Okay. I hope the reading has been helpful and I hope it is um, meaningful and I hope it makes sense for you guys more than anything because I feel like it's not a typical Sagittarius type of reading. Um, so I hope it's helpful for you guys. I hope that it's um, going to be helpful for you in navigating the energies for this month. Keep things close to your chest, okay? Keep things close to your chest. Um, you definitely have some people that you can go to for advice. You definitely have some people. So the way I look at this, if you're ever confused, you have a person here. This is an authority figure. If you're looking for a mentor, if you're looking for, you know, to bounce off ideas off of, or you're just like, I have this job offer. I'm not sure if I should take it. You have somebody that you can come to. And then on the flip side of that, this is a card about a male figure that has passed on spiritual divine protection ancestral spirits if you're ever confused you can consult him and you can ask him for guidance ask him for a symbol ask him i have two paths in front of me point me to the right one assign one symbol to one path one symbol to the other path and see what crosses your path choose a symbol that's a little bit less um, that's a little bit more obscure so, you know, don't choose something that you see every day, but choose something that's a little bit kind of um, um, random or less common so that, you know, you when you see the symbol, you would know. So you have some major big things coming your way. And uh, it's really important for you to get your head out of the clouds and, you know, focus on the here and now. Okay. So Sagittarius, I think it's going to be a really beautiful month. I'm actually excited for you guys. But it seems like it's, um, it seems very surreal. That's what it feels like. And it, it doesn't feel like a typical Sagittarian energy. So I wish you all the best, all right? Take care of yourself and, um, you know, take it easy for this month, okay? Consult other people. Consult other people. You have mentors and guides all around you, okay? In, in, um, in the flesh or in spirit form, but you have them around you. Consult them. Don't block them out, okay? Don't block people out for this month. Take care, Sagittarius. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.